started making more money than the teachers, you know, that were teaching me at age like seventeen. Yeah, telling you, telling you to study. Yeah, and you're making a hundred, <laughs> hundred grand skateboarding. Champions are made, and cash always follows. But where did it all start? These are the true stories of the blockbuster sports deals that went down in the locker room, boardroom, and between the lines that made many people very, very wealthy. This is the playbook. Welcome to Entrepreneur's Playbook. And I am blessed to be with an old friend of mine here in our new studios, but Greg Lutzka, he is a famous skateboarder, but more importantly, he's a humanitarian, a philanthropist, and an all-around great guy. Two-time silver medalist, one-time bronze medalist at the X Games. Yeah, I've had some silver, some bronze. Um, You're like the Buffalo Bills of skateboarding, brother. Yeah. You're always there. Yeah, I'm psyched <laughs> to be here, man. Money Maloof Cup, yeah, I won that contest. There's a few contests I've won three, three times uh with uh, Tampa Pro Skate Park, and yeah, it's lo I just love to skate. Right on. Well, take me back, because, you know, we're both Southern California. Oh, I know you grew up in Wisconsin. I grew up time. in the Midwest, and I moved out to Southern California at uh, age 18. And Oh, well, later. Yeah. But so you started skating early, but not skateboarding. How Tell us about that. Yeah, so growing up in the Midwest, uh, I was on hockey skates. I was playing ice hockey. I was on hockey skates at age two. Um, pretty much half my life, being a kid, I was playing ice hockey. Some kids started skateboarding on the team. And sure enough, I had to grab a skateboard. And so when you're when you're in Wisconsin, where do you skate in the winter? Inside somewhere like a pools? Or they empty the pools? What do they do? <laughs> I don't know. So, it's not like you're so young that it was you know like the the norm when you were nine. Everybody wasn't skateboarding. Yeah. So I mean, growing up in the Midwest, we didn't have a skate park. My mom worked for the city. She like went out of her way to try to get a skate park built, and 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 a guy came in, Neil Levins. Uh, he wanted to open a skate park called Four Seasons. He got a grant from the city for fifty grand. At like age ten, we got a skate park. So half my life, I was, you know, it's snowing out there and the weather's kind of crazy. So half my life, I was just in the skate park, and that's really how I started getting into it and just grinding every day and didn't want to leave the park. And you know, I started doing contests there. And wow, um, that's, that's like the beginning, you know. Yeah. So you like kind of like the really pale, all oddball out when you I know, still am real pale. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you're in not California, the, the whitest kid out here. You're like the Southern California, but I can imagine yeah. like when you were a teenager and you're winning competitions, right? Yeah. You're traveling all around the country. You got some yep. sponsors, I imagine. Correct. Right, right from Wisconsin, yeah. and you know it's kind of like when I play golf and there's some kid that from Minnesota yeah. that's like a minus two <laughs> handicap. I'm like, when do you play golf, man? Like, you know, California you play all the time, but yeah. were, were there any like jokes or cheesehead? jokes or anything going on with tony hawk um, or any of those guys i mean you know when i was a kid i grew up skating i just loved it and they had local skate you know they had local skate competitions and i started doing well there i got sponsored by a local skate shop called phase two and then a local skate company beer city they sent me down to tampa am the first year i won the worst fall award i fell super hard when went to the hospital all this crazy stuff happened you know what i mean and came back to milwaukee that next year just like skated more and more in the park and like want to go to tampa and do well the next year got got to tampa the next year like one year later got in the finals had you know went home with all these business cards you know next <laughs> thing you know i'm flying to california um i was riding for i left beer city started riding for a company called Elenium. so al partner brought me under his wing uh from there i went home probably a year later after that i was 16 or so tony hawk called my phone chad musket called my phone um, Ed Templeton wow. called my phone from Toy Machine, wanted me to ride for these brands. And, uh, you know, I started to come to California more and more. I just stayed loyal to, to the company Elenium that was kind of bringing me out. And I rode that wave until the end. And a fella named Rodney Mullen, who just, you know, who's, who's amazing in the skate world and was the first to, to, to create the kickflip, you know? Yeah. Called me. I was like, dude, I'm starting this company called uh, Almost. And we want you to be a part of it. And it was uh, myself and Ryan Sheckler and Chris Haslam and and Daywon Song, so I knew it was going to be something big. And, and when took the, equity in that, I assume. No, no, I was just come so, on, Greg. I needed <laughs> I to be the, your agent. I, I know I, I wasn't the entrepreneur back then. I mean, I was just like a little kid, you know, and just wanted to like skate and and you know they took care of me. They they traveled sure. me everywhere and that's the know, trick. It was a we blessing. Take good care of you, but we yeah. keep all the money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the annuity. It was, it was a blessing though. At yeah. the same time, I I was getting out of the Midwest. I moved to California. Um, you know, when I was 16, I won my first pro contest going over to Germany, and I won like 30 grand. I was I was going to school at that time, and came back. I bought a brand new BMW, nice. and I started making more money than the teachers. You know, that were teaching me at age like 17. Yeah, telling you telling you to study. Yeah, and you make the hundred <laughs> hundred grand skateboarding. You're like, wow, well, something's wrong here. What are these people <laughs> thinking? I have a question yeah. now. You you talked about a big fall, yeah. and if I remember, you've had a couple big yeah, falls oh, in your yeah. life. T tell me about the worst 
that yeah. you've had and what it was like, you know, to get back on the board. Because I, you know, I watch what you guys do, and I played college football. And I'm a different person. I always tell my mom even, she goes, I don't know how you played football and pole vaulted <laughs> in college. And I said, I couldn't do it today. Yeah. I, I, I my body you. feels it today, too. I'm 32. I mean, I'm still grinding <laughs> every day out in the street, jumping down 10, 15 stairs. I feel it every single day I skate. Like, my body, like, I think now I take care of my, bo my body more than anything. I'm trying to go to yoga. I'm doing stretching. Yeah. I'm eating healthier. I haven't drank since my birthday back in April. Like, oh, I'm not, not hanging out joking. anymore. <laughs> Like, it's so crazy, like, riding for all these health brands, you know, like Amy's Kitchen and Aqua Hydrate nice. and on it and all this stuff, you know. Um, you know, my life has changed over the years, you know what I mean? From, but what was from that big that fall that you had, the one that was Yeah, the fall, I mean, you know, Hollywood High when I was filming for round three, you know, I separated the collarbone. Oh, I got that, that pointy thing. Got that scar. That? <laughs> <laughs> my elbows are just, you know, they're Thrash. still scarred for life. Now, now back then, you know, because you know, I'm old enough, I'm 49, uh -huh. but you weren't wearing a lot of pads and helmets when you started, I imagine. I still, no. I, you I still mean, don't? No, I don't. No. Don't listen to him, kids. <laughs> would, you, would you recommend kids to wear pads and helmets? You know... Uh -oh. Growing up, I just was always against it, you know, like the local skate park made you wear a helmet and yeah. we always would take our helmets off and we we're just rebellious kids, you know, that's what kids do. And I mean, I guess if I had a kid, you know, I'd, I'd probably want him to wear a helmet because I've cracked my, my, my head a couple of times. I've had concussions. Yeah. I, I was in Estonia, made it to the finals in the contest two years ago, got a concussion. I ran into someone, got completely knocked out. Sheckler helped me get up off the floor. That's kind of what I remember going in the ambulance, going to the hospital, Dang. all this crazy stuff happening. And um, I guess what if this would have happened in America, my I probably wouldn't have done this, but I came back to the contest. I wasn't supposed to skate. I grabbed my board. I was like, yo, I, I flew all the way out here. I'm in the finals. And I, I end up going in the finals, and, and I end up winning the contest. The no first, way. yeah, the first. It was like the NFL in the seventies, man. Yeah, it was like That's awesome. it was like mind over matter. It was mind over matter, and like the first go. Uh, you get two runs, right? And the first, the first run, the first trick in, I fell. And right there, I knew I was like, I probably shouldn't be skating right now. It kind of like hit me. And then the next run, I just like <laughs> no looked way. down at my board. And I was like, just focus on one trick at a time. And that's what I did. And through that, you know, through that concussion, I was kind of cloudy headed, but you know, I I, I know my it, skateboard, you know. So I just you're like Tony Hawk. I just Tony stayed Hawk on it, me. you know. They're giving him slack when he had his first baby. Oh, right, yeah. They'll give him slack for skating with his baby in his hand. Oh, yeah. And, and he looks to the reporter. <laughs> They're trying to give slack to anybody yeah. for anything and in this world. And he's like, he goes, you understand. He goes, it's, I'm safer on a skateboard than 99% of the people walking. Walking, right? yeah. Which I, love, which I love, and right on. But yeah. I do not suggest kids out there wear helmets, yeah. you know, just because these crazy maniacs can do these kind of things. Now, one interesting thing you said that I'm going to point out is you said, yeah. you know, I focused in on one trick at a time. Yeah. Some of the things that I teach in business, yeah. you know, because it, it's that outcome. If you're searching for that trophy, mm -hmm. you're not going to get there. And I always tell people, you can drive from San Diego to Maine, yeah. At night, yeah, by just seeing two feet in front of you in the with your headlights, yes. right? Yeah, you could drive all the way, and that's how I approach business, right? Yes. I'm looking right in front of me, preparing, right? I have a map that tells me for the future, yeah. but I really focus one in on the at a time. one trick yeah. at a time. Yeah, yeah. And I think you know, yeah. even if you're concussed yeah. and I use a lot half of, aware, <laughs> I use a lot of tools too, like visualization and you know meditation too, just to kind of keep my mind straight and like what I want to do and. And I break it down into steps. I went to a, uh, uh, it sounds totally crazy. I went to a hypnotist, Dr. George Pratt. No, had, that's cool. He, he was on Larry King. He worked with Common. He worked with all these dudes. He worked with Rob Deerdick. Actually, Deerdick, I yeah. seen an interview with him. And he like changed my out, uh, like outlook on on just you know how to go about things in life and how to become more successful and how to stay determined and and just build your goals and like have everyday goals and. You know that was really important to me, and that's what I use every day in my life now. And and I visualize a lot of the tricks before I do them. Like I'll go to spots and in business too. Like I'll visualize companies I want to work with, right and, and just put it out. That's why you're here, man. I know you've yeah. been dreaming about Dave Meltzer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you got Mr. Clean and John Lovitz right, right? on the wall. Yeah. That so I mean, <laughs> it's one of those things. You know, when you when you want something in life, you 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 put it in your you put it out there and you you drive yourself every day to to achieve those goals and you'll get those goals. Yeah. And you know, I'm not like a math music, you know, I'm not like crazy in school and like got straight A's and all this stuff, but I, I definitely built a strong career myself in skateboarding and in business and and collaborating with a lot of companies even outside the the skateboard market with Harley Davidson and right on. and you know water brands and just all kinds of stuff and and got in the movie industry a little bit and commercials and just what, like what's more frightening to um, you like a huge pipe 
right? Or yeah. going into, you know, a C-level executive to Meetings? pitch some business. Yeah. Uh, I, I like both. I, I drive yeah. on both, you know. Jumping down stuff, especially nowadays, definitely, you know, the first one jumping down a 15 stair, like, all right, here we go. Like, it's always the scariest, the first jump, you like at a rail, like that you haven't skated yet, yeah. you know, and then you get kind of used to it and you go again and you get on it and you slide all the way down. All right, I got this, you know, and that's kind of how it is with business a little bit too. I, I, I it, it relates with each other, you know, I'm very business minded, but I'm also very minded on my skateboard. My skateboarding definitely got me you know, the skills to pay the bills to get where I'm at, you <laughs> like know? That. The and skills to pay, pay the, the bills. bills. <laughs> that's, that's a quote, man. Let's yeah. go special. The skills to pay the bills. So it's one of those things, you know, we have Dew Tour coming up this week. Yeah. Uh, that's a big competition. You know, I've got mel- multiple gold medals in that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to make a career doing something you love, you know, whether you're an artist or a skateboarder or, you know, whatever you're doing, yeah. you've got to have some kind of business-minded structure to, to take it. Or if you're a guitarist, like my brother, you know, he's a guitarist, but he just he doesn't put the business mindset behind it to make a career doing it. And that's why, you know, someone like him isn't necessarily playing guitar for a living. But maybe he doesn't want to every day. You know, right. maybe that's not his end goal. But when you want to take something from passion to making it a career, you got to have some kind of business mind behind it and partnering with companies and partnering with people and putting yourself out there and marketing yourself. I mean, it all comes down to marketing and 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 doing what you love and having passion. Right on, being authentic, which you being are. Being authentic. So you um you, you have passion in you know business and in skating. Mm-hmm. What do you love to do when you're you're not doing that stuff? Man, when I'm not skateboarding, I like going to the mountains. I like snowboarding. I like hanging out just with my friends, doing normal stuff. I'm not yeah. like too over the top like. No golf, you know, guitars. And, uh, I play, like, you know, I'll play golf a little yeah. bit. I play acoustic guitar sometimes. My brother got me into playing guitar. Yeah. You know, it's more just relaxing to, to me to, you know, strum the guitar at night and um, ride my motorcycle. That's what I do a lot, actually. I ride my Harley a lot. I ride dirt bikes now. Who, really? who would have ever thought I would have gotten into all that? That's that's beyond my mind, you know. At first, I thought it was sketchy. I'm like, man, this is crazy, and it, it <laughs> is, is cra- it is I love sketchy. A skateboarder telling me like, oh yeah, that's crazy. I'm it like, is sketchy a little you bit. You got a concussion but... and you won a yeah. skateboard competition. That's <laughs> it is crazy. Sketchy, but you just, you know, when Do you, you wear a helmet when you ride. Yeah, when I ride. Okay, yeah, just yeah. checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, kids, we can't watch this podcast yeah. anymore. This is too much. But um, it's like pushing yourself. Like like riding a motorcycle is like how I am with skateboarding. Like I pushed myself to learn how to ride. And I start riding on the streets, and I'm like, man, I want to take this to the dirt. Now I'm like, man, I want to hit these jumps and go to the track. And now I'm out there riding with Steve Caballero and like all these guys, you know, yeah. um, Brian Patch and Ryan Desenzo and some of my teammates, you know. So it's, yeah. it's, it's cool. It's just like you skating. guys trade gear and uh, give yeah. them mentoring. Do they skate at all, or do you? All my yeah, all the yeah. guys I ride with skate too, you know. So it's cool. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it's like. And now, are you a technology guy at all? Um, you know, I want to say I am because I, you know, I try to get the new iPhones and the new laptops. Yeah. I, I'm a big what's fan your, of what's Apple. What's your favorite app? What's your favorite uh, app? Right now, the app I use the most is probably Instagram. It's, yeah. Yeah, right. because it's, it's, it's honestly, it sounds silly, but it's like today's like magazine, you know, Thrasher. I, 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 I look at Thrasher a lot. I look at Transworld, but Instagram, I'm just on there every day, kind of seeing what the new kids are doing out there skating, checking out what other sponsors are doing and, and just, just, there's a lot of cool stuff to see in there. It's How a many followers that, do you have on Instagram? Um, a hundred and let's see, like hundred and forty or so. Yeah, have you have 000. you uh, have you paid or hired anyone to build that following? Because I mean, obviously, that's the future, right? Monetizing yeah. your following. Yeah, they gotta be authentic, which you are. Yeah, I mean, you know, I kind of built it from 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 skateboarding. Yeah. You know, kids follow kids follow me with skateboarding, and you right. know, the things that I love to do beyond skateboarding, I think they relate with. You know, like I post things about motorcycles and Harleys and stuff because I enjoy riding and I work with Harley, and that's a a great you know thing we've done together and i'm from milwaukee they're from milwaukee so it works uh but you know at the end of the day when i post skateboarding kids love that and yeah. and that's what you know that's what that's and why how, kids often, how often do you post every day every day two or three times a day sometimes. and you're just filming my story yourself. i mean we're doing yeah, the story right story, now right so, so yeah you don't yeah. have though like you know i'm so egotistical and messed up that i have like a yeah. film crew following me around posting stuff every day. <laughs> um and you know b- building we're gonna a, get to this level following. we're gonna get to this level i look up to exactly. Dave. that's why we're here right now <laughs> there you go cool well, we, we're gonna work with greg you yeah. know that's part of the reason he's in here is we really want to build that brand and one of the reasons we want to build your brand too is not just that you have you know incredible skills yeah, right to pay the bills and thank two you. you you know have a great business sense and you, since yeah. i met you seven years ago yeah. and your business savvy i keep my eye on you we have similar yeah. friends i ask about you all the yeah, time yeah. You, we you. keep in touch two three times a year but you know moreover you're, you're one of the people that live by my motto which is make a lot of money 
mm. help a lot of people, mm -hmm. have a lot of fun. Yes. Right. When I think yes. of my motto, I think of you know Warren Moon, yeah. Greg Lutzka, yeah. Andre Reed, some of my close friends. You're the right. guy in skating that really gets it. And yeah. you know, it's Sheckler. Uh, yeah, yeah, Sheckler, the foundation. Yeah, right? the yeah, foundation, yeah. and yeah. your friend, right? Yeah, I mean, great friend so of mine. So tell us about that and what you're doing there because cool. it's extraordinary. Yeah, I think. Well, number one, you know, I've had a, a pleasure working with a lot of people in my life, and. I've been blessed to be able to ride my skateboard for a living. I made, you know, a great career for myself and, you know, the money comes and it's just, it, it's great. You know, I'm doing what I love. I feel blessed. So I, I love, we're not it. talking about the women either. I, I, we kept that off. <laughs> this guy, I love to give back. It. I love to give back. Speaking too. of women, I love to yeah. give back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, a pleaser ladies. And he's right here in my studio. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, I like to give back too. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've gotten so much good in my life. I want to give back to people. And, and so I got on the board of the Shekra Foundation. We do a lot of cool events, uh, golf tournaments and skate events, of course. We do one right here um, at the Etney Skate Park. And, and Ryan's just, you know, a good friend of mine that I've known for years. So I got on board with his foundation. I'm a board member, uh, myself and four other guys, Christian Asoy and Manny and um, Fabrizio Santos. These guys are all awesome skateboarders. Um, so, you know, it's one of those things that's good to give back and, and I just feel good about myself and, and I love going to the skate park and just giving boards to kids and just doing, doing, that's really cool. you know, I try to just in life be a good person. You know what I mean? Do like, you just and, like go do a meetup like in Ladera Ranch at their skate park and all these kids are like, Oh my God, it's Greg Lutzka. Have you done stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, sometimes we cool. do demos and stuff. Sometimes I yeah. just like not even promoting it, just showing up at a park and just yeah. skating and. And just the kids that are cool and hanging out, I'm like, and I'm leaving and going my trunk. Here you go, dude. Like, here's that's a new so board, cool. man. You, do they you say, know? hey, dude, you're in my video game? They, that's they, a, that's they, the funniest one. Do they? Yeah, do that? They, they 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 just get excited. They're like, dude, we watch your videos and, yeah. and can you sign my shirt or whatever and, and and things like that. Yeah, of course. And uh, it's just cool to see that there's 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 kids out there doing what they love and and they have passion like I do and I relate with that and I want to see them succeed and get their you know achieve their goals. You know, and if right. I can be a mentor to them. That's awesome. You know, that's what's important to me. Giving back is very important. And, and obviously, I, feel, I mean, the guy that, yeah. you know, 50 grand to start that skate park, right, with the city. Yeah. You know, if that guy oh, with doesn't. Neil, yeah. With Neil, right? Yeah. Do you still talk to Neil? I do. Yeah, we're doing a demo. Uh, I'm going back to my hometown on the 4th of July. We're doing a demo on July 8th with another guy that's from uh, the Midwest, Chaz Ortiz, that I've, I've actually competed with over the years. But, but we're both from the Midwest. We're going to go back to Milwaukee. We're getting a bunch of our sponsors to send a bunch of gear. We're doing a best trick contest for all the local kids. So we're giving back to our community there. But yes, I do still talk with Neil. Nice. And I'm I'm proud of everything he's built over the years with the skate park and Without him, like I mean you can see the ripple happen. effect, right? How cool yeah, is that? Yeah. And then now are you a football fan at all? Uh, I'm, uh, you know, when the Packers won the Super Bowl, we yeah. definitely threw a Super Bowl say. party. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'm I mean, I, I love sports. I grew up playing ice hockey. I don't Who's follow... your favorite hockey team then? Yeah, you don't even watch now I, you know, I now live out here. I like the Kings. I like the Kings. I like Anaheim Ducks. Yeah, we got Being good from hockey the in Southern California. Yeah, I play. I play yeah. right here at Aliso, actually. So oh, right yeah. on. That's Aliso, and then Lake Forest on Fridays. I play uh, just pickup league. So I still play ice hockey. I that's still love really it. cool. Yeah, my brother plays goalie. It's it's great. I love living. <laughs> How old's your area. brother? Uh, twenty seven now. So you have a younger. And it, you know, he plays yeah. the guitar. Yes. Does does he skate at all too with you? He skates. It, I got him on a skateboard. He broke his wrist skateboarding, and then yeah. that kind of took him. He went to he went to school for a guitar and all that. He was going to MI Institute in, in L.A. So he yeah, got that's a great. School. Bachelor degree in there, or, or not bachelor? Um, was it music arts? Music degree, arts. Right? Degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and he did his final with the broken wrist, and and you know that was like the last time he skateboarded. <laughs> yeah. You would have been right back out there, like all yeah. strung up. He actually him. had his. Skateboard. You wouldn't care. I mean, he had his guitar sitting on his lap and like kind of doing it. Yeah, right yeah, on. So it's a little different, but he he made it happen. Right on. Well, I got my my final question. Cool. You do so much, but mm -hmm. you know what what do you want your legacy to be? Right. If we can have. Yeah. Anything, you know, there's kids out there that look up to you. There's foundation that you raise money for. You know, what right. what is it, you know, in 50 years that you look back and say, you know, for me, you know, I want to say that guy empowered others to empower others to be happy, right? Yeah. That, that's my legacy, yeah. and I, I work every day to be a service. What would be the Greg yeah. Lutzka legacy? I mean, for me, right now I have so many goals and doing so many things that I just want to achieve my goals and leave – like out there like you can achieve your dreams and you can achieve your goals and and go and get it don't be scared don't let anyone like deter you or tell you you can't do this because there's been people that told me you know when i was going to school like, you can't be a pro skateboarder i think my legacy is just like go make it happen and you know live your dream and have fun doing it i don't want to 
related just to skateboarding because you know skateboarding is one piece of the puzzle i think you know the goal in life and, and the legacy to live is like figure out what your passion is and and make a living doing it and then you never work it one day in your one day in your whole life you know what i mean because you're doing what you love i hear that man make a lot of money help a lot of people have a lot of fun yeah. I'd, I'd love to go back you know and talk to your english teacher and say <laughs> hey look at little greg now he makes yeah. six seven figures a year mm-hmm. still can't write very well but <laughs> this guy can skate and do some serious business so yeah. uh i'll tell you what i'm so proud of you i Thank just you. keep you seeing you evolve and we're at sports one marketing we're looking forward to working with you thank you uh you know one of my famous guests here on the playbook we got greg lutzka the unbelievable not only skateboarder humanitarian and also motorcyclist (laughs) wear your helmets kids this is dave Meltzer on the playbook with entrepreneur thanks i I don't stop upon my path you know i i question but i verify kind of always and so accessing information whether it's in the form of reading content and applying it to your life and kind of having great reminders and understanding that all the answers that we all seek are actually inherently within us.